All right, guys. I'm Prabhat. Today, I'm going to tell you about one of the interesting topics of prediction, the Montgomery prediction. So, uh, before getting started, we need to have some basic idea about some concepts, which will set up the stage for our prediction technique. So. Uh, these all are the topics which we're going to cover in this uh, video so before going into our main topic the montgomery reduction we'll be talking about different small 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 concepts and one by one let's perfect them and then we'll go into the big topic the montgomery reduction so before going into all these topics we need to know uh, what is cryptography so uh, these days we might have heard about a lot of cryptography going on in different different fields and the security systems increasing the complexity increasing uh, we need we need security in each and everything whatever we do because uh, the, the growing revolution or the growing internet technology uh, the data being surplus the data being abandoned day by day we need to have different security algorithms which we have to implement to make our data secure which to make our transaction secure make each and everything whatever do we do online secure so in order to do this we need cryptographic systems so basically cryptography is the practice and study of the techniques for secure communication in the presence of third parties and this may not make sense or it might make might make sense but let's see this diagram which will make sense let us consider we have two parties a and b say this can be uh, two persons a and b and uh, a wants to transmit some data from a from a to b or in the vice versa direction from b to a so we always have a threat from other third parties who may try to steal our data or just intrude what exactly we're doing so uh, just we can see that arrow uh, the message being transmitted from a to b or else b to a and the high risk of C intervening in between them and trying to find out the data. So to avoid this, to avoid this thing to happen, uh, we design cryptographic systems. So how is it done or how was it done basically? In ancient times, when before the cryptographic system was induced, there was, there was some techniques which they used to do, which was not called cryptography exactly. But yes, we can uh, date the technology or the methodology which they used to follow some centuries back to cryptography. If suppose A wants to send some information to B or B wants to send some information from A, we use the syrup. In our example, uh, let us consider B has some information and he wants to transmit to A. So we, we, we developed a system before. Uh, so A has one locker which has two keys so before sending this locker from a to b uh, a sends one of the locker to one of the key to b and now he sends the closed locker to b since a and b have similar keys b will open the box put his information into the box close it and send the same box to a now a can get the box and unlock the box using the key and retrieve the information so this is one analogy but uh, we have to come up with some basic and different different mathematical solutions there are quite number of disadvantages with this system what if there are like uh, 100 200 or n parties over uh, in this b place for example we have uh, n customers so we want to get different different information from different different customers so the main drawback will be a need to purchase so many lockers and so many keys this this is and maintaining all this thing is quite uh, not quite easy and quite tedious job so these kind of things are like major drawback to this so we as time passed we came up with new new methodologies new new techniques and different different implementations of these techniques now let's talk about uh, a better analogy which can explain our uh, project so uh, let's start working about color cryptography so in cryptography we have uh, two types of keys 
namely the private key and the public key. So as the name suggests, private key is a type of key which will not be shared by each and every person. It is kind of private and it will be uh, with probably one person or one party. Whereas uh, when it comes to public key, as the name suggests, public key is a type of key which will be shared with different persons or different parties and which is used to get and retrieve the information. So we have uh, two parties again here, A and B, and the same a possible intruder C. And we have two keys here, private key and public key. Uh, we have the private key to be red color and the public key to be green color. One very basic and important thing to be noted here is the color red is, no, is a unique color but we have different shades of red so each and every shade will have a different color code so when you call red there may be different shades of red but if you give a color code to a red it is a unique color of red so this public key is derived from the private key so basically this public key is the inverse of private key so green is the inverse of that unique red color we transmit this public key from a to b and keep this private key only with a so when we are transmitting the public key there is a high possibility the intruder will also get the public key so once this public key is with B and B wants to send some message uh, say which is yellow color here he combines the green and yellow color to get a new color which is the encrypted message so the blue color is our encrypted message in this scenario so once this encrypted message is obtained at B this encrypted message is sent to A and again now there is a possibility of getting this encrypted message to C. So to get the information or the message yellow, C needs to have a decryptor key which he is lacking. Whereas we can design a decryptor key at this place A since we have a private key. So the basic step what we do here is we design a decryptor and we, and we decrypt with the encrypted message and we get the final message yellow. So this analogy we can use in our cryptographic system and we can derive a mathematical solution. So one of the secure cryptographic system is the RSA cryptography system. So till date, no one has decrypted that RSA cryptographic system and it is quite strong and quite secure till date. So let's come up with a mathematical solution for RSA and let's discuss other important stuff in future slides. So uh, this is the device which many of you might have seen or even if you don't, if you haven't seen this device, no worries. Uh, so this device is basically uh, designed by the company called RSA and this is called as hard token. Well, uh, this is the instrument where people use to get the public key, they use it and retrieve the information. So uh, before going to RSA cryptography, let's discuss about one simple and efficient concept called the Euler's Tertient. So uh, we have to get the Euler's Tertient. So we have uh, say some numbers 1 to 15 and we need to get the Euler's Tertient which is represented with phi of n. So phi of n is the number of co-primes to n. So for example, I have a number say 5. The numbers go prime to n are 1, 2, 3, 4. So the number of numbers co prime to n are 4, which is nothing but my phi of n, the Euler's tertient. Similarly, for 8, I have 1, 3, 5, 7 are the numbers which are co prime to n, and the number of uh, co primes are 4, hence the phi of n, the Euler's tertient is 4. Even for other examples, we can see uh, if, if we consider the case of 12, we have 1, 5, 7, 11, which is again 4. So one important thing to be observed here is 
when we see the prime numbers here uh, maybe like 2 3 5 7 11 13 and so on the Euler's total phi of n is nothing but n minus 1 so uh, for example if uh, see uh, 2 is a prime number so the phi of n will be n minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 which is 1 similarly the case for 3 which is a prime number 3 minus 1 2 and the case for 5 which is again a prime number 5 minus 1 4 is the Euler's total but if we consider some other number which is not prime say for example 8 so 8 minus 1 is 7 but it is not the Euler's total so this this trick works only for the prime numbers and we make use of this Euler's total concept for the prime numbers and we implement in our system so uh, this is the mathematical solution we take basically uh, two prime numbers which we represent with p1 and p2 for simplicity we consider somewhere around two digits or three digit numbers but in real time when they implement uh, RSA algorithm or RSA cryptography they use digits which are around 350 to 400 digits long so uh, just to make it simplified to understand the concept we don't use so long numbers but rather we use some around uh, two digits three digits and we understand the algorithm we multiplied the numbers p1 and p2 and we represent it with n again uh, to make this system simple the n is very very small here probably three or four digits because we are multiplying uh, small two digit numbers but in real time again this is quite quite huge and the system complexity increases now we calculate the Euler's totient, the phi of n for p1 and p2. Since p1 and p2 are prime numbers, it is quite easy to calculate the Euler's totient, which is nothing but p1 minus 1 and p2 minus 1. And then we choose a public exponent, which is e, and e is chosen in such a way that it is odd and has no factor shared with phi of n. And then we design a decryptor using extended Euclidean algorithm. We just see all these steps step by step and we have some Python codes which will make our life easy to uh, get the inverse or to get other other important stuff. So uh, let's see the implementation part of this now. We again have two parties here A and B and we want to transmit some information from B to A and let's again suppose that C is the intruder. So we take two prime numbers P1 and P2 on the side of A and note, note that these are uh, small numbers of two digits. For simplicity, we have taken just two digits. And in the real time implementations, these are again 350 to 400 digits. And we calculate uh, the Euler's total in phi of n, which is nothing but, uh, since these numbers are prime, they'll be uh, 53 minus one, which is nothing but 52. And 59 minus one is 58. When I multiply that, I get 3016. So I keep this information aside and use it for the decryption in the later part. Now I design a public exponent e which is equal to 3 and n which is uh, nothing but multiplication of p1 and p2 which is 3, 1, 2, 7. So e is odd and it has no common factors with phi of n. Now I transfer this information e and n towards b and this may be also uh, tracked down by c the intruder. I have some uh, message m which is a high at b side and I do some simple encryption by taking a equal to 1, b equal to 2 and so on I get high equal to 89. So I use this formula m to the power e mod n which is represented by c and I get 1394. Now the same information the 1394 is represented by c and it's transmitted towards a. So uh, this information can again be tracked down by c. Now I have to use a decryptor and get the information or the message m which is equal to high or 89. So I use this formula d equal to mod inverse of e uh, phi of n and I get d equal to 2011. So uh, for this we have written a small python code which will do the job for us and I can show you how exactly it runs. So uh, I have written the Python code here for finding the mod inverse. You don't exactly need Python, you can have any programming software to write a small code which will get the mod inverse value. Uh, so here mod inverse is my function and the code is written for mod inverse over here. 
and 3 and 3016 are my public key exponent and fee of n values so when i run this code i should get the fee of uh, i should get the mod inverse value so i get 2011 as my mod inverse value so even in my presentation i use the same thing 2011 so once i use this as my decryptor and use the value of c and a formula i, I should get the message high or 89 so I use the formula c power d mod n and we're the value of c is 139 for the value of decryptor d is 2011 and when i solve this i get the message high or 89 uh, two things to be noted here is two things to be noted here are one the value 1394 to the power 2011 is quite huge when we are just using two digits the value is so huge just imagine when the value uh, when the digits used are somewhere around 350 to 400 digits and in a similar fashion, uh, the second thing is the C or the intruder has the has uh, the public key as well as the encrypted message C equal to 1394. But he can't get the message M equal to 89 because he can't find the constituent numbers of N which made 3127. Because when this number is pretty huge, it is quite difficult to uh, just get the numbers from which the N is formed. Now uh, let's see the basics for modular division. What exactly is modular division and how we do it? So uh, the result of a modular division is the remainder of an integer division of the given numbers. For example, in this case, uh, I take 125 modulus 5. So when I divide 125 with 5, I get the remainder as 0. So this is my modular division result. In a similar way, when I divide 7 with 3, I get the remainder as 1, which is the result of a modular division. So whenever you encounter the case of modular division, it is nothing but the remainder of the two numbers. Let's see one of the important graphs of our project. So uh, this is the time complexity of modular division. On the x-axis we have number of digits and on the y-axis we have time in seconds. So as we see, uh, the time taken by modular division when the digits are less is quite low but it increases significantly when the digits are somewhere around greater than 250 300 400 and so on so when it is somewhere around 400 you can see that uh, the time complexity increases by years so these are nothing but maybe it, it may take around 1000 years so even for the fastest or fastest computer to calculate modular division is quite complex so this, this thing we take into our advantage and we design our crypto system. So uh, when we are digging deep into Montgomery algorithm, our goal is to calculate uh, this factor, which is nothing but A to B mod N, where A and B are two prime numbers. And N is also a prime. And we choose an R such that R, R is greater than N, and R is power of 2 and co-prime with N. So uh, I'll let you know in future slides how we choose R and how we do uh, the modulo, modulo algorithm and Montgomery algorithm uh, function. So uh, let's see an example and start with the example. Consider we are taking two numbers 43 and 56 and n equal to 97. So one thing you can observe here is 43 and 56 are prime numbers and we have different steps to calculate uh, this Montgomery algorithm. So uh, <clears throat> I choose r equal to 2 power 7 and I'll let you know how uh, why I have chosen this number 2 power 7 and not other things. But one thing to be noted here is basically we choose r in such a way that which is uh, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3 or something and so on. The reason for choosing that is uh, doing a modulo multiplication with the power of 2 is easy when compared to doing with some other numbers. And then we calculate uh, minus n inverse mod r. So we can calculate the n inverse here in the, in, in the simple and the straightforward way as we use the Python code with a little bit of modification. So we calculate the n inverse value and mod r. r is nothing but uh, our 128. So this comes up to 95 mod 128. Now I need to calculate r bar. So to calculate r bar, the formula is r square mod n. And again, uh, my r square will be 2 power 7 whole square, which is uh, 2 power 4, 40 mod 97. So uh, my calculation of 43 into 56 mod 97 is reduced to this, and the value is 88. 
So uh, now we have to reduce each and every factor. We find A bar, B bar and C bar. So we use this formula uh, for A bar. So again we can write a small python code for this and this is the formula which we need to implement. So it's not only about python, we can use any program language like C, Java or anything. So once we are doing this, we calculate the value of A bar, B bar and in a similar line we calculate C bar. So once we can get C bar, which is um, nothing but R inverse is added to C bar, we get the value of C by using a reduction technique of C bar. So this is nothing but 80 mod 97, which is uh, the final value is 80. So uh, the total value of 43 into 56 mod 97 is reduced to 80 mod 97, which you get it as 80. So uh, till now whatever we have seen, the example and method which we are using is quite good but when we are implementing for a hardware structure or we are just trying to implement on PHD or whatever you know, it's quite complicated. So we, uh, whatever approach we are now using is a little bit better than the before procedure and this can be implemented directly in PHD. So now uh, a better example, I take x equal to 941 and y equal to 509. The digits are a little bit um, more than compared to the previous example, and I take m equal to 1, 4, 3, 3. So I change the notation a little bit here. I have taken x, y, m instead of a, b, and n. So uh, whatever is the notation, my uh, aim here is to find x, y, mod m. So when I'm calculating, it is nothing but 941 multiplied by 5 of 9 1, 1, 1, 4, 3, 3. So I, I convert the numbers into the constituent binary numbers or binary representation. So when I convert 941 into binary, this, this is the number which I get. And 1433, the M value which I convert into binary representation, this is my representation. Now the biggest secret will reveal choosing the R value. So I choose R equal to 2 power 11. The secret behind choosing this number is, uh, or the number 11 is, the number of bits which m constitutes. So these are nothing but 11 bits. So I use 2 power 11. So in case if I have 12 bits, 30 bits, 40 bits, or 15 bits, and so on. So this number changes accordingly. So now I find r inverse in such a way that r into r inverse mod m equal to 1. So I need to find a value r inverse which is nothing but equivalent to when, when I do r r inverse mod m equal to 1. I get, the, I get the value R inverse. So by doing this, I get the R inverse value to be 240. So now uh, this is my algorithm. I first initialize z equal to 0 and I run the loop from i equal to 0 to n minus 1. And uh, I calculate this value. I take xi. xi is nothing but the binary of each and every one, one by one bit of x. I add it to z and then multiply it to y. So when I get this result, if it is odd, then I add m to z. So z will z will be z plus m, and then I divide by two. If in case z is even, then I don't do this step directly. I do z equal to z by two. So once this loop is completed, I just verify if z is greater than or equal to m. So if it is greater than or equal to m, I just subtract m from it. So once I do this. I calculate the value x, y, r inverse mod m. But our final aim is to find x, y mod m. Let's take one example and see how this algorithm works. So, uh, taking these numbers, I now use my algorithm and find my final result. So, I take from LSB to MSB. Uh, my x values are here. So, this is the way I take it from LSB. So, 1 being the LSB number and the 0 here is uh, the MSP number. Now I calculate uh, the factor z plus xi into y. So initially I set my value z to 0. So z is nothing but 0 and xi is nothing but 1 multiplied by y. The value of y is 5 out 9. So 0 plus 5 out 9 is 5 out 9. Now I calculate or check whether 5 out 9 is even or odd. So uh, I can see that 5 out 9 is odd. So as the algorithm says, I add the value of m to it and divide by 2. So I add 5 out 9 plus 1, 4, 3, 3 and I divide it to 2 and divide by 2 and the final result is 971 and this I store in z. When I go to next bit, x equal to 0. So I calculate the same uh, 
factor z plus x i into y now my z value is 971 plus x i is nothing but 0 0 into whatever the value 509 is 0 so the z partial value will be 971 <coughs> now uh, I again calculate or check whether 971 is even or odd since 971 is odd I then add 1433 to it and then divide it by 2 and then I get the value z final as 1 to 0 so I, I follow this procedure so on and so forth so in case if in between somewhere I get an even value as in this case so 2104 is even so I don't add 1433 to it instead of that I directly divide it by 2 and I get the z final result so I, I do this loop till my uh, all these values of x are done or uh, I reach the msp bit and I find that uh, my final z final result is 1599 now as the algorithm says I compare 1599 with m and 1599 is greater than m so what I do is z equal to z minus m so I subtract m from z which I which gives me the value of 166 so 166 is nothing but uh, the value of x y r inverse model but I need to calculate x y model so to find x y model we just calculate r model initially and then I use the formula r model which is 615 I multiply with 166 into 615 mod 1433 so the problem of that is reduced to this and if I do more and more uh, like bigger numbers of 300 to 350 this result will be quite significant so you can see that the big numbers are reduced so once you do this you can you can calculate this number quite easy or you can again um, use the Montgomery algorithm so it can be like repeating of the same algorithm twice thrice four times so that the total value will be reduced and the calculation is quite easy when compared to calculating digits of probably 350 400 or 600 so this is the use of Montgomery algorithm and uh, this is my uh, block diagram of the implementation which I'll be showing in VHDL so uh, as I have shown you the example I give my XI values here I give the Y here and I multiply them and I, I use a series of compressors so this is my uh, divide by 2 operation which is nothing but uh, we use the shift registers and then I compare whether it is even or odd so all this process whatever I have explained till now the process the same is implemented in VHDL and I'll show the implementation of that which will make the idea whole idea pretty clear. One thing to be noted is we, we calculate the final result to be XY R minus modem, modem and we can just mo modify this to XY modem in a quite easy way. Alright, uh, so let's now see uh, the VHDL implementation of our project. So well uh, this is the VHDL code that I have written uh, to implement the Montgomery algorithm. So uh, this thing will be calculating x, y, r inverse model. So most of the Montgomery algorithms or uh, the reduction techniques uh, give the output to be uh, x, y, r inverse model. And calculating x, y model is not a big deal once we calculate x, y, r inverse model. So uh, the inputs which we give to the program are in this form. So I choose x equal to 159, y equal to 233, m equal to 239 and r to be 2 power 8 so once i choose these numbers r inverse will be 225 so i calculate xy r inverse modem which is 159 multiplied by 233 multiplied by 225 mod 239 so this gives me the value of 211 which then when converted to binary uh, it comes to this value so we need to get this value all right let's get started so uh, let me just simulate my program so once i do this i just give my uh, inputs and outputs to my waveform let me add it to my wave all right so uh, i give my x value to be 159 which when convert into binary you will take the form 100111111 now I force the value of y to be 233 which when convert into binary it takes the form yes I got it 
and then the clock signal I just take a falling edge with all this uh, it doesn't matter now uh, I force the reset value to be 1 and then I start the force the start value to be uh, in 1 then I run this program for 100 picoseconds all right I got the result now uh, I just force the reset value to 0 And then run for another 100 picoseconds and then I force the start value to be 0 and then run for 100 picoseconds and again just force start the one by start the value to 1 and run for 3000 picoseconds and this should give my result now so the output result here in Z should be my expected binary value Alright, uh, so when I run this, doing the clock pulse, so this is my result. Let's check whether we got the final correct result or not. So 1101001, yes, and then this one convert into a decimal number system, at least 211. So, which is nothing but the XY RMS model. So you can just take a pen and paper and verify these values, and you can do other values and check it. So, this comes to the end of presentation. Thank you.